So the Indigo Disc DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has finally come out and everyone's been having a great time with it. But one of the coolest things that you can do inside of this DLC is actually catch wild starter Pokemon, which is something that you don't really get to do ever inside of a Pokemon game. As I think the last time they did something like this was when you had the island scan inside of like Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon where you could find rare Pokemon like the starters inside of the wild. Or I guess Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee also you could find like Bulbasaur and Viridian Forest and stuff. But the point is finding rare Pokemon like the starters inside of the wild is something that doesn't really happen that often and seeing it inside of this DLC is really Really cool because these Pokemon aren't even shiny locked so you can actually hunt them and try to find your favorite shiny starter Pokemon too so it's really cool but how exactly do you get these starters? And that's what I'm going to be showing you guys inside of this video. I'm going to go through all of the requirements that you need to do in order to get these starter Pokemon to appear inside of your game, but also share with you guys the locations for all of these starter Pokemon as well. And these are going to be marked as video chapters for every single starter. So you can just click through the video and find your Cyndaquil or your Oshawott or your Rowlet or whatever your favorite starter is so you can get right to it. Now real quick before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that I am having a special giveaway for the holidays where I'm giving away a digital download code for any Nintendo Switch game or DLC and all you got to do to enter is click the link below in the description or the pinned comment and you can have a chance to win any Nintendo Switch game or DLC that you want whether it's the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Boosters Course Pass or Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Mario Wonder, any Nintendo Switch game that you want. The giveaway does end right before Christmas so definitely be sure to click the link below and enter for a chance to win. Now if you start exploring the terrarium inside of the indigo disc from the moment that you start the game, you can wander that entire DLC for hours and hours over and over and you're never going to see any of the starter Pokemon appear. Believe it or not, but the Pokemon that you see inside of the terrarium when you start the indigo disc are actually not even the final potential of the Pokemon that can appear. In fact, there's actually a way to being able to upgrade every single different biome that you have inside of the terrarium and by upgrading the biome, you can actually get rarer Pokemon to start appearing including the starter Pokemon. So then how do you upgrade these biomes? Well just like everything else inside of the indigo disc it is going to require a lot of blueberry points or BP and I'm talking like 12,000 because there's four of them there's four different biomes and each of them costs 3,000 to upgrade and each of them hides a different set of starter Pokemon so if you want to find all the starter Pokemon you're going to need a total of 12,000 which might seem like a crazy amount of BP and so if you're wondering about how you can get that really fast I actually did make an entire guide video on how you can grind BP really quickly inside of the Indigo Disc. So if you are interested in that, there should be a little eye up in the corner right now. You can definitely click on that or tap on that and go and watch that video on how to get your 12,000 BP really quickly. And then you can come back to this video, but I'll also have it in the outro of this video if you want to go and watch it after you're done watching this one. So what do you do after you've gotten your 12,000 BP? Well, you're going to make your way to the entrance to the Blueberry Academy right over here. And then from the entrance, you're going to make your way all the way over to the League Club Room, as that is where we can access the computer that's going to allow us to being able to upgrade all of the different biomes. And so that's where you're going to spend all of your BP. So you're just going to go over here to the computer inside of the League Room. And on the computer right here, you're going to contribute BP and there's going to be a lot of different things that you can do. So instead, we're going to go right down here to the one where it talks about the biodiversity. And it says here, boost the biodiversity in the savanna biome, in the coastal one, in the canyon and the polar. And they all cost 3000. So that's why you need 12000. So we're going to contribute 3000 right here. And it's going to give you a phone call right here. It's going to thank you for your support. And yeah, you're basically it's, it's going to say right here. So you can find stuff like a wild Charmander and you can encounter more Pokemon. So that's basically what you're gonna be doing for every single one of these. So I'm just gonna really quickly kind of go through all of these here and then I'll come right back. All right, so starting off here with Bulbasaur, the very first Pokemon can be found right over here in the coastal biome. I'll show you guys my location right here. I am in the coastal biome, basically in this like little corner right over here uh, where you can see, I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit more so you can see it's like right over here with the kind of grassy area that you can go here and explore pretty much look around inside of the grassy areas here. You'll be able to see Bulbasaur. If you're looking for my favorite starter Pokemon Charmander, you can find a bunch of Charmander pretty much right near where the entrance is to the Savannah biome and pretty much right where you can fly. Like you can see there's a whole bunch of Charmander right here and the location that I'm in right here is right where you can fly to, like where the uh, Savannah rest area one is. Like you can see right here, just right around that. If you just run around a little bit here in that area, you'll be able to find a ton of different Charmanders. 
If you're looking for Squirtle, you'll be able to find a ton of Squirtle right near where this water area is inside of the coastal biome. I'll show you guys my location right here. It is pretty much right by where the Canyon Plaza is. You just go down here into this little pond area right here and right by the border of the pond, you're just going to see a ton of Squirtles just kind of chilling here. So easy way to find Squirtle right here. All right, if you're wondering about Chikorita, you can see right here, this is where Chikorita is going to appear. And if you're wondering about the location, we're just at the very border here in terms of the coastal biome, right into the savanna. Towards the bottom right here, you can see my location. Believe it or not, but there's only one cave in the entire DLC where you can find Cyndaquil. And that's actually found inside of the polar biome, right towards the edge right here. You can see this little cave that appears pretty much at all the way into the corner right here of the polar biome. And if you find this cave and you walk inside here, you're going to be able to find Cyndaquil just kind of chilling here. And this is the only place where Cyndaquil likes to hide. It's a shy Pokemon, so I guess this is where the only location to find this Pokemon is going to be. If you're looking for Totodile, you can find it pretty much right around wherever there's mud inside of the savanna biome. It's usually kind of bordering right around the mud. So you can see right here in the location, this is actually very close to right where the savanna outdoor classroom is, that mud puddle right below it. I just went around the border here, walked around a little bit, and I got to see a Totodile pretty quickly. Now moving into generation 5, Trico can be found pretty easily inside of the canyon biome. He's kind of in like this little area right over here. And you can just go right here to the canyon outdoor classroom, fly over here to this kind of little island that's kind of sectioned off right here. And then you should be able to just wander around any body of water and see kind of Trico just chilling right around it. Oh wow, a shiny Saviper. I did not expect to find that while making this video. That's really cool actually. I'm going to go ahead and catch that immediately. And there we go. I never knew this shiny looked so good. Torchic can only be found in one entire cave inside of the polar biome. And it's basically kind of hidden right here inside of the edge of the biome. Where if we go right here from the polar plaza, you just want to fly all the way down here. And you're going to find a very small little kind of cave that you can wander into. It might take a little bit to try to get it to spawn in here. But you just got to keep walking in and out and you should be able to find it. If you venture deep into the torchlit labyrinth, which you can find pretty much right where the outdoor classroom is for the coastal biome. If you just go right here where the water is and near this area, you'll find a cave entrance and go inside of the labyrinth here and venture deep into there. You'll be able to encounter Mudkip. Moving into generation four, if you're looking for Turtwig, you can find Turtwig inside of the canyon biome and right where the canyon plaza is, you can just fly over here, wander right here into this little kind of area that is in the water here and you should be able to find Turtwig pretty easily. Chimchar can be found inside of the polar biome and it's actually pretty easy to find right from where the plaza uh, fast travel point is. You can see right here, this is where the polar plaza is. I just went down here and then you can see right here, Chimchar appears right into this little area on the ice and it's pretty easy to find him. As a penguin, Piplup is going to be one of the easiest Pokemon to find. It's pretty much all over the entire polar biome. Like you can kind of just wander wherever. I just looked wherever there was kind of this white ice area and wherever you can find ice that you can kind of walk around on and just look around kind of where the water is, you should be able to find Piplup pretty easily. Moving into Generation 5, if you're looking for Snivy, you can find that inside of the savanna biome right here. We can see right here, right kind of near where this muddy area is. If we look on the border of it, that is where you can find Snivy, kind of right, right by where this uh, savanna outdoor classroom fast travel point is. If you're looking for Tepig, you'll be able to find Tepig right near where the coastal biome is, near sort of the classroom. You can see right here, this is where the canyon outdoor classroom was. And just right here in this little grassy area, you'll be able to find Tepig. Oshawa can be found inside of the polar biome right towards the edge here where this ice area is. If we can see right here, right towards the bottom right here, you can see that's where you can find Oshawa. If you walk inside of the Charged Stone Cavern, which is going to be connecting the polar biome to the canyon biome, inside of this cave, you're going to be able to find Chespin. And so you basically just got to look for that cave that's connecting these two biomes together, wander around a little bit, and you should be able to find Chespin pretty easily. Fennekin was honestly one of the hardest Pokemon for me to get to spawn. I don't know why, but it just took a really long time. But basically what I did here was I just went to the Savannah biome, but you got to go over here to the central plaza, which I think has the closest fly point. And then you just make your way down over here into kind of like this field nearby the mud. And I just walked around here and then I finally found it after just taking a little bit of some time. 
Froki was actually one of the harder ones for me to get to spawn. I basically flew over here to the coastal plaza and then from here I went over to this little hilltop on top here and that's where I kind of just walked around until it finally did spawn. It can be a little bit hard to find because its entire area is pretty much the entire north of the coastal biome so it might be a little hard to find but I just kept walking around until eventually I found it. Rala can be pretty easy to find. You kind of just have to go here to right where the central plaza is and then walk over here to right where this green area is and I just walked around here for a little bit and I was able to find a bunch of Rowlets. Now Litten is also another Pokemon that's actually really easy to get. All you got to do is just go over to the Canyon Plaza inside of the Canyon Biome and then being able to go from the Canyon Plaza right over here to this little area where it's inside of the water here. I just walked around a little bit on the top here and I was able to find a Litten pretty easily. Poplio is found pretty much all over the coastal biome. The best place to find it is pretty much around the beach areas. That's where I'm looking really. And that's kind of right here where this coastal plaza fly point is. And I just flew over here and then wandered off into the beach here. And you can just keep walking back to the plaza to reset the spawns here. And then just keep walking back and forth until you see it eventually appear on the beach. And then finally, moving into Generation 8 with the Galar Starters, if you're looking for Grookey, you can pretty much find it over here on this beach, and it's right here by where the uh, rest area is for the coastal zone, and then you can pretty much come into the coastal one, go down here to the beach, and then because there's a border right here to the savannah, you can just keep jumping back and forth to resetting the beach, and then just keep looking around on the beach, and you should be able to find a Grookey pretty easily. You would think a score bunny would be found around some grassy area and not in the middle of the polar biome, but that's pretty much where you can find score bunny. As I pretty much just flew over here to the polar plaza and then just went down over here, and it's pretty much all around wherever this icy areas are. So you can just look around, and then I eventually ran into one. Now Sobble you can find kind of in this muddy area over here. It's pretty shy, so it's always going to be kind of running away from you. But you can find it pretty much in this muddy area right over here. And I just went here from the central plaza, just went all the way down here into this kind of mud puddle right here. And you just look around in here and you should be able to find a Sobble. And so yeah, there you go guys. That is pretty much how you can find every single starter Pokemon from past generations and the locations for where to get them. If you guys enjoyed the video, definitely be sure to click that like button and also subscribe to the channel as well as I am going to be having more Pokemon videos in the future. So definitely be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Comment down below and let me know which one is your favorite and which starter Pokemon was the hardest for you to find. Go follow me on Twitter at actual arrow so you can be featured in videos and also join my Discord server as well. We've got a bunch of people in there who are always talking about Pokemon and Smash Bros and Nintendo so definitely be sure to join that and remember to enter my giveaway as well I'm giving away a digital download code for any Nintendo Switch game and all you got to do to enter is just click the link below in the description or the pinned comment but yeah that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching